right, everyone. Welcome to Ops Lecture, not seven, eight. Um, this is our eighth lecture. We've met for eight, at least eight times now. And we're halfway done with winter quarter. So yay us, we, we're still alive. And that's the link for the slides as per usual. I don't think it's active right now, but it'll be active once the lecture ends. And all right, so last time we had our Arduino shenanigans. So we have those the winners for that announce it being announced at the end of this lecture. And Ryder has been working very, very hard with your parts boxes and they have been shipped. So looking, uh, be out there looking forward to um, seeing a package from UCLA IEEE on your doorstep. So today we're gonna talk about transistors uh, wait, you got yours already? That's super fast. Well, nice. That's right. awesome. What? Cool. Okay, that's oh, cool. Stuff. We're going to have to put, right, like, right. see how many people got it. See when we could start Actually, these projects. Let's, let's do a poll right now. Um, yeah, they're just sent out on Thursday. Okay. I didn't think they'd get there. You know what? All right. There's I stuff, right? Have... Do a happy react. Yes, that is it. React with something if you got something. Wow, that's a lot of you. Maybe that, oh, maybe we can have wow. this project to do soon. Good to hear. Okay. Let's go. All right, so next. Um, that's good to hear everyone. <laughs> it looks oh, like yeah, the awesome. boxes are on their ways. So today we're gonna to talk about transistors and IR sensors. And um, looks like we can't, we're going to have a project soon dealing with IR sensors. It's gonna be, yeah, that's gonna be coming out. And then in terms of ops lectures, we only have like two or three more lectures to go and two or three more projects to go. And then in spring quarter, you'll be having, doing the capstone. So that's something to look forward to. All right, so today we're gonna to talk about transistors. I try to make a heart with the transistors, but I ran out of transistors. So there we go. Uh, so what is a transistor? A transistor is basically the building blocks of circuits. So uh, you can either use it as an electronic switch or a signal amplifier. Uh, if you use it as an electronic switch, you can use um, basically what it lets you do is you can control a large current with a small current, relatively small current. And these make up um, the basic building units of our circuits. So like these logic gates I have down below and microcontrollers, and you see some circuits over here that um, uses signal amplifier, uh, transistors as signal amplifier as well. And more having more transistors means um, having more logic, which means having more computing power. So last year, Brian Wong said that there are more than like 9 billion transistors in a seven nanometer chip. So transistors are very important. Um, yeah. All right, now we're gonna talk a little bit about, um, but actually a transistor is what it physically is. So generally, you know, transistors with three different terminals. We have the emitter, the collector, and the base. And all three of them play important roles in how the transistor functions, and each part can be different, which makes a different transistor. Um, they are made of semiconductors, um, which are neither a conductor or an insulator. What's special about semiconductors is that you can actually change them into being more like a conductor or more like an insulator. That helps regulate the flow of current through the semiconductor. Um, a lot of times when we talk about semiconductors, we talk about the doping level. And um, what doping is, is there's added, um, um, they call them um, impurities, and that adds more electrons or holes, and that can sort of change the behavior of it. Um, there's two kinds of doping, P-type or N-type. P-type corresponds to hole doping, N-type corresponds to electron doping. And you see when our common um, transistor here, we have um, two N-types on the edges and then a P-type in the middle. Okay, now to think about them more conceptually. Um, so semiconductors are very um, complicated. They're, um, they take like a lot of physics and specifically quantum physics to understand. So 
don't worry if you don't understand this stuff completely. It's still going to be um, a topic. Uh, but like I said, they're made out of semiconductors. Um, they have impurities in them. Um, there's holes and electrons. The more electrons you have, the more easily current's going to flow through. The more um, holes you have, the um, less it's going to be able to flow through. Um, when we put uh, p-type and n-type silicon next to each other in a circuit, the electrons will only travel from n to p because the uh, the n-type allows the current to flow, but the p-type kind of stops it. So it kind of gets stuck in the p-type material. Um, this is generally how diodes work. So the LEDs we've used have been just an n and a p together. Uh, but when we add that extra n on the other side, that creates the um, transistor. Um, yes. And then um, a lot of you will be taking EE2 next year if you're in EE. Um, and that's you'll learn a lot more and do a lot more math with this stuff. You, you might hate that class. Um, so how do transistors work? Okay, so like I said before, the electrons can go from the N to the P really easily. So if you look at the bottom of the transistor here, you have the electrons flowing from N to P really easily. But it can't flow back into the N though. So what we do is we have to apply current into the P type uh, base, that's where the base is, and that allows the electrons to again flow through the other side, allowing the current to flow. So you could think of it like without the current flowing into the p-type uh, base, then it's off. When it does flow in, then it is on. Um, essentially, we just adjust the voltage, that which then controls the current that flows into the p-type. Um, all right. Now, um, that was very conceptual and a lot about physics and semiconductors and all that. All we we're really concerned about is how they fit into the circuit's view. So um, they're commonly used in as switches or amplifiers. So that comes into the form of a lot of logic, right? Um, if we think of it like a switch, you know, we have this base control that turns um, it on or off. So let's the current flow through or not flow through. Um, it could also act as an amplifier because the current flows into the base then has to flow out. So if we're putting only some current in to the emitter and add some more into the base, it's like they add together and we get um, an amplified current. We have three pins, the emitter, collector, and base. You see on the top right the diagram for this. This is for an NPN transistor, um, and then we'll go over the other version of that. Um, yeah. So the arrows indicate the direction. Um, notice something about the current. What was that in regards to? Oh, you're muted. Yes, I was muted. Um, I don't know why you noticed about the direction of the current. If you notice what? anything, you can let me know. I don't know. What oh, that okay. Was for. <laughs> all right. So basically, what we all need to worry about is that there are three pins, and then we can do to um, change the things with the base to um, change its behavior. Voila. So any questions so far? Um, your future e-courses will deal a lot more with transistors. So if you don't get it, it's totally fine. OK, moving on. All right, so the type of transistors we're using are called BJTs. That stands for a bipolar transistor. Um, this is the main kind of transistor you'll see when you're like making these um, really these like physical circuits on breadboards. Um, in like your computer and phone stuff, you use a different kind called MOSFET that's kind of more complicated, but you'll learn about that in future class. Right now, we're about the BJT, and there's two main types there's the NPN and the PN. Now, Really quick, if you look at the bottom diagrams, you can kind of see the difference. So um, for the NPN, we have the current flowing um, out, out of it towards the emitter. And then um, on the PNP, we have it flowing um, out of the emitter into the base. Right? Good way to remember which one is which is you remember NPN is not pointing in. The letters come up. If you guys can think of a good one for PNP, let us know. But for the most part, just remember NPN, and then if it's not that, then PNP. Um, so current flows from C to E, um, and then the electrons move in the opposite direction. Currently, think of 
positive things going, but really electrons are going opposite direction. That's all it is. Um, oh, and then I mentioned holes earlier. Um, holes you can think of as just like positive versions of electrons. They're not like physically anything, but what happens is that like there's a bunch of electrons moving in one way, and it looks like there's a hole, like a missing electron moving the other way. So they just call them holes. And you think of it as a positive charge. Let's go. Um, okay, so uh, going back to sort of the switch aspect of uh, transistors, um, we could think of it as either on or off. So um, in its on state, that's when the voltage we apply to this is greater than the voltage applied to the collector. If you look at this picture, um, we're assuming that the base voltage is greater than the other two. What that does is allow that current to flow from C to E as if it were a short circuit. On the other hand, if the voltage applied isn't high enough, then it'll act like an open circuit. So this is kind of similar to um, like a, the buttons we've used in previous circuits, but now it's being controlled by other parts of the circuit instead of physically by us. Um, this is a complicated chart that sort of tells you the four different modes. Um, the main two that we're going to be concerned about is saturation and cutoff. Um, that describes the two things I just described. Previous slide, um, where BB is greater than B and BC, or BB is less than both of those, and that's on and off. The active regions, what that does is it gives us more of like a, a variable resistor, I think, where we can sort of limit the current and still let it through. Um, but saturation cutoff is open circuit versus closed circuit. And these are for um, NPNs. And so if you want to get these for PNPs, all you have to do is flip the polarity. And you can see in the chart, it's like basically the opposite. Yeah. So to revisit the water analogy, transistors are like electron, electron valves, basically. And you can adjust the base, the voltage at the base, um, to allow for more or less electron flow from the emitter to the collector. So when the transistor is on, it's like oh, the valve is just like on, you know, uh, the water flows unblocked. When it's off, the water doesn't flow. When it's active, you can control the amount of water flow. Yes, that's kind of like the <laughs> take all the math and physics and put it in the back room kind of approach. All right, any questions so far? All right, all right. So what are phototransistors? Phototransistors are basically transistors that respond to light, you know? Um, and so the base absorbs light and controls the amount of current flow uh, as transistors do. And if there's a lot of light, um, there's the valve is like on. Well, the transistor is on. It's unblocked current flows from the collector to the emitter. And there's no light there's less current flow. So this is kind of similar to how photoresistors photo work, but kind of opposite, depending on how you wire up in your circuit. So based on, based on the diagram we have up here, is this an NPN transistor or PMP transistor? Yes, it is indeed NPN, because if you see over here, uh, the arrow indicates the, um, direction of current flow, and it's not pointing in, so it's NPN. Cool, cool. All right, so on the next project, at some point in the future, we're going we're gonna to be using these IR emitter receiver pairs. Um, so basically, IR receivers are phototransistors that re respond to IR light. And IR light is basically just like some wavelengths of lights, as you see over here. Um, and the, these pairs are usually used um, to like as distance sensors. So when the emitter emits IR light, if there is an object in front of it, uh, the object reflects the IR light back to the receiver. So the receiver receives a lot of light. Um, but if there is no object in the front, there is no um, IR light reflected reflected back so the receiver receives less higher light and that's how we um, use these pairs as distance sensors. 
Interesting things, interesting things happening with my animation today. But um, so receivers are these clear ones. Uh, they kind of look like white LED, but you have to be careful because the unlike the LED, um, the shorter lead is positive. Or is that like the LED? I don't know. So don't know. These you are, have to yeah, the, the shorter leads on both of these are a positive one, which is opposite of what we're used to. The LED. Yes. Okay, leads are the length of the leads. I don't, that's not what I use to tell polarity, but if that is what you use to tell polarity, you have to be um, careful. And emitters are these black ones or dark ones. And yeah. So I guess we'll go a little bit into what the project is going to look like in the future. So it's going to be a distance sensor project. Yes. So these, the, each of them have their own set of rules. And it's really kind of frustrating that like whoever made these parts didn't like think to make them all the same. But um, so the shorter leads on each of these refer to the positive ones, which is opposite of the LED. And then also they have different flat edge versus round edge telling you which one's positive, which is very, in my opinion. So you just kind of have to, you know, reference it until you get it all memorized. And there is a chart coming in. Whoa, 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 polarities. Okay, so uh, this is a little chart of how to tell the difference between the positive lead and the negative lead. Um, whatever, whichever method you use to tell the polarity of these components, you just have to pay attention to not mess them up because these um, receivers do look like LEDs, but they have different polarities. All right, all right. Next up, so this is approximately what your circuit is going to look like for the distance sensor project. You can see over here, this is your microcontroller, and these are analog pins, digital pins, and VIN, ground, and reset as per usual. And we were just basically um, reading these values at A5 and A3. And so I have a couple of questions for you. Depending, uh, according to what we know so far about phototransistors, what is A5 going to read when there's a lot of light? <laughs> okay, anyone else? It's totally fine. All right, so it seems like um, Enoch got it, right? Um, would you like to take a stab at explaining your reasoning? Wasn't it stated on the slides a bit earlier that high read, that the a lot of light reads high and a low light reads low, right? Hold on. Enoch said. Wait. Did we say that? Did we say that? Maybe a maybe a little photo dark. Yeah, no light equals less current flow. So and light equals unblocked current flow. Okay, so if if there's light, let's go back to the to the diagram because I want to explain this. Okay, so if there's a lot of light. What's going to happen is that the current is going to be able to flow through the receiver really well. So you could think of it like a closed circuit as it's just a wire. So what's going to happen then is that the um, voltage drop across R5 is going to be the entire voltage applied to it because none will drop across the IR receiver because it's essentially just like a wire. And what that means is that um, the analog read value is going to be low because the voltage drop across R5 is going to be essentially the entire voltage. And so there'll be no voltage left by the time you get to the war that A5 pin is because uh, there's no drop across the IR receiver. Conversely, if the IR receiver was open, then there's no current flowing. 
um, and then the voltage drop across R5 is zero because the current's zero, V equals IR, and then you read high there. Does that make sense? Yeah. So my bad. Um, so the things we have over here, this is dependent on how you wire up your circuits, not this slide, this slide. Yeah. So if you were to reverse the uh, the the I receiver and resistor, you would get the opposite. Mm -hmm. So when there's light, um, it'll be like short circuit. No light, it'll be like open circuit. Right, Ryder? Yes. So when I'm sorry, yeah, I yeah, my bad. Um, so if this is like a short circuit, as as Ryder said, you'll be reading zero. And then if this is like an open circuit, uh, you'll be reading high because imagine this part just doesn't exist. This part is just like um, wired up to the V in, which is high, right? Yes. Cool stuff. All right, next question is, what will A3 read when there's no light? No on light, it's no light. Yes. Right. Yeah. So if you sw um, switch the uh, the resistor and the transistor, we will we will get the opposite results. Okay. Cool. 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 Yeah. So at, in this diagram, A five, A three, they're basically the wired the same way. So when there's no lights. Uh, this will be like an open circuit, and then it'll read high. All right. And something you might have to do in the next project is noise calibration. So uh, the values you read can be very noisy depending on uh, the light levels in your room and other factors. So what you want to do is just take a bunch of sample values and take the average of them. So this is just a short code snippet that does that. So if you see over here, we just have a variable that we just add to and we take 100 samples and we divide by 100 at the end. So that's how we you know, take account for noise. <laughs> All right, cool stuff. That's it for the content, I believe. And now we have the iPadduino winners. So I'll stop the recording here actually.